Is it better to do steps at a smaller amount to start a fat loss phase or start with more steps? Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and I got a great question from my Facebook private group that's associated with our transformation challenge around cardio steps, zone two cardio, zone five cardio. Yeah, we're gonna talk about all that right now. So the question is exactly this. Is it better to start doing steps at a lower amount and then ramp it up once you stall? like a progressive overload for cardio. Do you find doing zone two cardio for longer more beneficial than doing longer bouts of steps? Are the other zones of cardio, three, four, five, beneficial in assisting fat loss? So let's take this one question at a time. Is it better to start doing less steps to start a fat loss phase and then ramp it up? Yes. Ultimately with fat loss, what you wanna do is eat the most food you can and do the least amount of cardio you can to get a response. Now that's not always gonna be a lot of food or low cardio. A lot of it depends on your lifestyle. One of the things I do when I consult with someone about a plan for them is I ask them what their job is. There's a big difference in somebody that sits in front of a computer all day and somebody that's a bartender in their NEAT. Now, if you're not familiar with NEAT or the non-exercise activity thermogenesis, we burn far more calories from our NEAT than we do from our cardio or our exercise, okay? So if you're not looking at your NEAT, you're probably missing out on a lot of extra calorie burn. So if you have a very sedentary job, we might have to take you from 3,000 steps a day right to 10,000 just to get the needle to move for fat loss. However, if you're working with me, and let's say you have a job that's very demanding, a nurse, uh, uh, like I said, a server or a bartender in a restaurant, or just somebody that's on their feet all day, I've had instances where I'd never have to give them cardio to get them to their fat loss goals, but we have to control their diet because they've just gotten in such bad habits that their movement wasn't the problem, it was what they were taking in. Those are the two main components of a fat loss phase. So yeah, I prefer to, to ask somebody, hey, what's your daily routine for steps? And if they're very low, I can either say, hey, we're gonna start with some cardio sessions or we're just gonna try increasing your steps throughout the day. Sometimes people love to get more steps, especially if they live in you know places where the climate is good or they have a pet or they have a reason to go for a walk. Um, I've even seen sometimes people that like live in a community meet up and go, hey, every day we're going to walk. Walking is by far and away the best form of exercise, the most underrated form of exercise there is. So what would I find better? Zone two cardio or steps? Definitely it's not close. It's the zone two cardio. Why? If you guys aren't familiar, I did a test on my channel a while back where uh, George and me put a heart monitor on myself and we tested out various forms of cardio from just walking outside, which I would consider just getting steps, all the way up to walking on an inclined treadmill with a vest on, that obviously being the most intense that we did. But what I found interesting was that just on an inclined treadmill, I burned about twice as many calories as walking outside. That means I can cut my cardio time down in half. Now that's zone two cardio. And if you aren't familiar with zone two cardio, I just did a video on this. It usually puts your heart rate around 130, 140 beats per minute. But the point being is that like you're finding a heart rate range where this is how I describe it to my clients. You want to feel your body temperature rise. You want to feel warm. You want to have a slight glisten, but you can definitely hold a conversation. Okay. The more cardio you're doing, that's going to be a little challenging. But if you haven't been doing any cardio and you start walking on an inclined treadmill, get ready. You're about to be out of breath soon. And so you might have to lower that. So zone two is extremely effective. It still preferentially uses fat for fuel, which means our hunger is gonna be controlled, okay? So for me, zone two cardio is way better than just getting steps. The other problem with steps is that if you give somebody a 10,000 step goal, you might not realize it, but that's like two and a half hours of walking, right? That's a lot of walking. So some people just say, oh, I get 10,000 steps. If you do, great. That is a great place to start. You're already leading a lifestyle that's fantastic. Um, okay, so the final question, are there other forms of cardio beneficial in assisting for fat loss? Uh, zones three, four, five. So let's talk about what those are. Zone two, like I said, is about 130, 140 beats a minute for most people. It's, it's a light sweat, body temperature comes up. You can still hold a conversation. Zone five cardio is basically life or death sprinting as fast as you possibly can. It is insanely intense, okay? Some people refer to it as HIT or high intensity interval training, but most people have never actually done HIT, okay? I come from a sports background. So when I started doing high intensity cardio, 
I was doing sled pushes, I was doing bike sprints. And when I tell you that after 10 to 15 seconds, you're ready to pass out, that's how you know it's hit. If you can go longer than 15 seconds, you are not doing zone five true cardio. There are a lot of benefits. You burn a lot of calories in a short amount of time. And in fact, you actually burn calories even after you stop doing the cardio. The problem is what ends up happening is you end up burning less calories throughout the 24 hour window. Why is that? If you go for a walk or do some incline treadmill and do some zone two cardio, when the session is over, you just go about your day like a normal human being. But when you do high intensity cardio, sprinting four, five, 10 times back to back, when you get done with that, yeah, you might have burned a lot of calories during that cardio session, but you're going to be exhausted the rest of the day. You're going to be fatigued the rest of the day. So what ends up happening is if you compare those two cardio modalities, you burn less calories on the days that you do hit. So what's the benefit? Well, the benefit is if you need to be doing something that's explosive like that, it's sport specific training. Fat loss is not sport specific. Losing body fat is not sport specific. So you don't need to do high intensity cardio. I've heard people say this. I did it. I've tried it both ways. It's way easier to just walk and walk on a treadmill than it is to do hit cardio. There's less risk of injury. And I didn't even tell you the worst part about hit cardio. The worst part about hit cardio you're exhausted, but you're starving. You're burning carbohydrates for fuel. That's going to trigger a hunger response. You're going to be starving. Also, I find that I'm able to not have such a low resting heart rate. When you do high intensity cardio, what really happens is that you adapt to that. Your VO2 max increases, your resting heart rate lowers, your body pumps less blood throughout the body. You're cold all the time. This is what I found. This was my experience. I no longer have that experience with zone two or walking. So steps, zone two, zone five, they can all work towards fat loss. But again, it's about finding an approach that's sustainable for you and something you enjoy. If you love going and doing sprints, do your damn sprints. Just pay attention to your calories, pay attention to your recovery, and, and for goodness sakes, pay attention to what you do the rest of the day. Because if you actually move less because you did high intensity cardio, was it worth it? Okay guys, I'll talk to you tomorrow.